two and a half thousand valves. Remember, there's another bank of equipment running directly behind here. You've seen the intercept procedure, the creation of the five hole paper metal tape, which is put on the course on the tools. And the tools here are revolving that particular metal tape at 30 miles an hour. The magic eye sent right there, and the first cell you can behind it is processing 5,000 characters a second. It's analyzing the holes in the metal tape. Using the power of this computer, it runs straight down the line, and those readings are related on this counter here. When this counter gets to its optimum, the machine will make a noise. The operator then has to print the result on this typewriter. No, it's not Not separate. Anyway, they print the result. But remember, that is only one result. It's the setting of the very first pin loop with 11 to go. Now, these messages were very long. And so, having got the first result, they're going to go back to switches. Remember, the switch control. Adjust the switches and carry on analyzing that tape. So all they've got is the very first setting of the very first signal. There are 11 to go. Now, these messages were normally very long, so it could take up to six hours to complete the whole process. Once they've got all the different settings, they stop the school, take that tape off, separate it, go to the tiny machine, prepare that machine, feed the tape through there, and that's at the other end of the working type right that has come several pages of high grading tape. So again, a very simple procedure. <laughs> now, this exercise of rebuilding this machine has been very complicated. When Sir uh, Tony first, sale first started it, he had nothing to go on, but he did manage to trace eight black and white photographs. Then it turned out British Telecom were upgrading telephone exchanges and going to So they picked up the scrap and some photographs and were able to assemble all the appropriate panels. Then, of course, there was a major problem. How do you wire this machine with no record? Well, having announced the project, fortunately, certain post office engineers came out of the woodwork, <laughs> and a limited number of wiring diagrams were forthcoming, because they couldn't have just been giving you a souvenir. A certain example on the wall there. And that has facilitated this rebuild. But I would stress that over 80% of the work has been trial and error. Well, over 13 years, teams of four work at any one time, and they've expended over excess of 6,500 man days in the project. It's a very comprehensive exercise. But the joy is, the public's running and it's working, and we'll see, as I said earlier, on that worldwide information of being the first program for the computer in the world albeit switch programs and no stored memory because every result has to be printed on the timeline. When you compare the work of this machine today, very much the machine of yesteryear, to a modern day PC with a latest Pentium chip, you will find the modern day PC with a latest Pentium chip takes exactly the same time to do the same work. And the reason is the engineers were logical, they applied straight logic, in fact, and wired the whole of this machine in parallel. That's why it's so fast. That uh, analytical process has been reflected here instantly. Modern day computer bounces from number in different directions, and that's why it ends up taking so long. If you wish to prove the point, there is a major website. It's called codesandcyphers.org.uk. Look for Anorak's or Nerd Corner. Press the button, and if you're on broadband in particular, I wish you good luck. <laughs> it's all there for you. Valves. Well, valves, in fact, lead me now to the first micro fuel. These valves are not made anymore. Odd, in fact, the uh, the valves are on it. What count? Two and a half thousand valves on this machine. Uh, Forty are wartime valves. In fact, this is why I'm here. Ten of those three over there. So the purpose of this operation, bearing in mind this machine draws five and a half kilowatts of juice, my colleagues have a very simple transformer at the back there, which in the morning powers up very gently, and we'll take it down very gently now. They can't afford valve wasted. They've got enough spares for approximately 10 years. The first of my appeal is, as you're all geeks in your own right, some of you must have got an interest in radios and old-fashioned valves. <laughs> some of you must have some valves in your attic, garage, under stairs, wherever it might be. So you will come back to the depart with those valves. <laughs> <laughs> Even if they're the wrong ones, you can trade with the ones you want. We'd like to keep this going for 20 years. There will come a time when engineers will have to come in and modify the applications to affect the activities of yesterday. As long as we've got the right files, we can keep this running. So think on that, please. Make inquiries must all your very obscure contacts, and uh, hopefully you can return the files. In fact, we had a, a gentleman who appeared about 18 months ago from New Zealand with a large pile of valves full of the appropriate files. Well, well, and the appeal has gone worldwide. Well, so, well, 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 so the first program is the computer, um, and so effective in its own right. Now, it leads me on to my second appeal. My
colleagues here have been very brave, and guess what their hobby, hobby is? Having rebuilt this. They've been collecting computers. <laughs> they are nerds in their own right. <laughs> and they formed a new museum called the National Museum of Computing. It's open today. It's normally only open three days a week. Thursdays, Saturdays, and Sundays. We're setting it up. Um, and it starts with an abacus. It goes right through all the counting machines, computers, etc. The full range of analog computers for the latest day. Um, they've also got tanks of PCs with the fashion games on. We find people have more fun than they do here from the modern day PlayStation, which costs a lot of money. We can have more fun here than that. We've also got the CAA connections, got a ground radar control section. We can monitor ground controls from the aircraft flying into the Heathrow, Stanford, Gatwick, uh, Luton, etc. And on a fine day, we go outside with the radar, identify the plane, and watch it flying overhead. We make popular things. And for those who wish to learn to fly, we can teach you how to fly, and you don't get, if you crash the thing, it's, it's a simulator. So there are lots of different attractions within this range of buildings. It's on their behalf. They have taken over responsibility for this range of buildings, all the rents, rates, overheads, and particularly utility bills. Now, it's independent of the Dutch Park Trust. All members of the public who wish to visit here will have to pay the entrance fee to the Trust. But in order to keep this facility open in perpetuity, free of charge to all our visitors, bear in mind we are a major education centre as well, we have three schools today here. And we're with kids be without computers and um, especially with the soldier. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we've got some boxes here, and as computers are now so widely used, offices, shops, homes, schools, etc., 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 if everybody has the benefit of computers, so there's a minimum of one pound in our collection boxes. We're trying to raise them down to keep this facility as free of charge for all other people in the country. Right, does anybody have any questions about Colossus? 